Thank you. Thank you. So perhaps the most important factor behind my journey, my career as a musician, is the fact that I did not major in music at all. So I started playing the violin when I was three years old. And throughout my entire experience, I was always that ambitious child growing up. Um, if I wasn't studying for a test or cramming for a paper, you would find me with my violin uh, practicing in an orchestra rehearsal somewhere. But when I got to college, I didn't know if music had a place anymore. There were so many new things around me that I thought it was time to focus on something more important. I went to Stanford and I was one of those freshmen who had no idea what they wanted to study. In fact, my roommate used to get so annoyed with me because each Friday I'd come up to him excited about this new major I wanted to dedicate my life to. But luckily, after Chinese and exploring human biology, I came across what was called the product design program at Stanford. And it was completely new to me. It combined engineering classes with creativity workshops where we would learn how to develop new product ideas. And the typical path for most graduates is to go on and work where they would design physical products like a lamp or software like a mobile app. And I saw a lot of people be successful at this, so I thought it was the right path to follow. So I started and I filled out the four-year program sheet. I took the classes I had to and was actually able to land a pretty well-respected job in this space, an internship in this space. And it felt great. I, I felt like I was on my way and I could throw it on the resume. But when it was time to start work, I felt something different. While those around me looked like they were thriving and enjoying the experience, internally I felt empty. And every morning my alarm would go off. I felt this heavy weight pulling at me. The mere thought of going to work made me feel like an imposter, an actor who was playing out a role, reading a script that was written for somebody else. My performance suffered too. I was letting other people down around me because for some reason I just couldn't bring all of myself to the job at hand. And I, I remember taking the train home one night and I thought to myself, you know, was this it? Is this what I was working for through middle school, through high school, through college? Was it just for this feeling of dissatisfaction and underperformance? And so I made a decision that for the rest of my time at school, I had one year left, and I made the choice that the rest of my time there, I was going to spend it building out a future that I envisioned for myself instead of a future that was just scripted out, no matter how great it looked for others. And in the back of my mind, I knew I wanted to do something with music, but I didn't want to just go down a regular path waiting to get discovered somewhere. I wanted to build something sustainable. And I started to think, you know, what if I could somehow combine my, my love for the violin with this academic background and innovation? And I developed an idea for a venture where I could perform on the violin and also speak for companies, using music as this metaphor to inspire creativity. And it was a very rough idea at the time, but I began to share it with people. And most people around me thought I was kind of crazy. They didn't understand why I would want to do something like this when there were clearly safer, more secure options around. But for me, it was simple. It was really simple. I had spent countless hours working towards goals, ideas that were handed to me on a syllabus. And I wondered what would happen if I invested that same energy, that same time into my own idea. And with that mindset, that, that idea has grown into reality. And now uh, leading companies from PricewaterhouseCoopers to, to Disney, they bring me in to speak and perform my original music on the violin uh, to help their people think differently. And I'm proud to share this now because when I wake up, I no longer feel like an imposter. I feel authentic in what I'm bringing to the world. And that weight that once pulled me down, it's no longer there. And so in the few minutes I have left, I want to share a little bit of the mental framework I had and reframing my education to form this unique career. And hopefully by sharing a few of these ideas, it can spark an idea in the minds of the students here or in the students in your lives of how they can take control of their own education as well to 
carve out to create a future that isn't just determined by their major or by a syllabus, but by what gives them energy. But before I jump into this, I'd like to preface this by saying that you know, I don't believe that someone wanting this, that you wanting this is a selfish thing. In fact, I think it's the opposite. I think it's realizing that the world is in dire need of passion-driven leaders, people who give all of themselves to their work, and there's nothing stopping you from being that person. All it takes is a simple mindset shift, a shift towards embracing that your, your work, your path, your journey, whatever you want to call it, is not about choosing between this purposeful life and paying the bills, but the work, the journey, the fun, is in finding a way, a unique way, to do both to do both. And I believe that school, specifically college today, is it can be a perfect place to do that if, you can, if you're able to prioritize your own internal aspirations over a predetermined category of success. So imagine you walk into a grocery store, a huge grocery store with 20 aisles and thousands of ingredients to choose from. But as soon as you walk in, you're asked to choose one aisle, you choose aisle 10. And you walk over to aisle 10, and as soon as you get there, you're handed a recipe, and you're told that if you follow these steps right here, then there's a good chance that you'll be able to make something that tastes pretty good. And so you don't want to waste your time in the grocery store, and so you, you buy the ingredients, and you take them home, and you spend hours making the soup or whatever it is. But it doesn't quite taste right. Like it doesn't kill you, it doesn't poison you, but it doesn't quite satisfy you the way you thought it would. And you're left sitting there with a barely touched bowl of soup wondering what was in those other 19 aisles that I missed. And I believe that this is the path for so many. It was the path for me, following a recipe, a list that offers security but lacks passion and personal investment. I, I envision an educational experience in which students aren't just propelled by their ability to take a test, but by their capacity to take a risk on themselves. Where learners are, are not passive, but active creators, chefs of their own futures. And in the few minutes I have left, I want to share three quick ideas, three ideas on how students anywhere, regardless of resources, can become the master chef of their own future. So the first idea is move across the aisles. Move across the aisles. College, schools everywhere, are this, they're these amazingly diverse places. But college specifically, some students are, are forced to choose their major, their singular focus, when they are only 17 or 18 years old. And while this can streamline success for those who know exactly what they want to do, for many, it can put them on a fast track towards developing a limited perspective, a limited frame of experiences that can leave them undifferentiated in a saturated labor market. And so most people, uh, they, they see me and they, they assume that I studied music in college and they're surprised when I tell them that I didn't. And if I did, you know, I probably now would have been auditioning for orchestras or something like that because that would have been my frame of reference. And I would have been one of many doing that. But by not studying music, by studying design, I was able to expose myself to this whole new world of creativity and leadership training and was able to see an opportunity to connect both worlds. And I truly believe that if students uh, can take uh, a nonlinear path, then they will find sources of input that can separate them from the pack. So move across the aisles. Idea number two, redefine your ingredients. Have you seen one of those Top Chef shows, the ones where they give contestants nothing but leftovers to cook from? Have you seen them? I was recently watching an episode, and it was crazy. They gave the, the contestants nothing but mashed potatoes and dried fruit to make something out of. And it was astonishing because they, they still uh, managed to create these magnificent dishes. One person even created ice cream. It was crazy. Yeah. And it was, it, was, it was funny because, you know, no matter the ingredients they were given, they, they saw the potential in them to uniquely use them towards the vision that they had in their minds. And I think it's so important for students to adopt this mindset as well. 
to take control of their ingredients, their classes, their education, and define what they want to get out of them. Uh, so for me in my work now, every week I'm speaking to audiences that range from 30 to 3,000. But I never took a public speaking class or anything like that in college. I gained confidence in doing this actually in my engineering classes. And so we would build products and at the end of the week we would pitch them in front of a whole audience. And while it was great to build those technical skills, the true opportunity that I saw for myself was in being the first one to volunteer to present. And I used each opportunity to work on my, my capacity to communicate an idea to an audience. And I believe that in students, in any class you have, in any situation or an experience, there will be the, the, explicit, uh, the explicit learning learnings and takeaways that are handed to you on a syllabus. But then there's also the potential to find these hidden learning opportunities that you can use in any class to move towards what you want. And I think it's always important to take time to search for those. So redefine your ingredients. And the last idea I'd like to share is this. Don't give up after the first batch. The greatest chefs aren't always perfect. But what makes them great is their willingness to throw away that first batch and apply what they've learned until they eventually create the taste that they want. We've been trained by systems throughout our entire lives that reward us on how well we get from point A to point B. But if you want to create your own unique point B in life, it's important to embrace that there may not be something to reward you right away. I remember when I first started sharing what I wanted to do, I felt very isolated because most of my friends had jobs that were lined up and you know, teachers couldn't really offer me advice because it was just a bit outside of their expertise. And so I was waiting and I was waiting and I was waiting. But the turning point for me was when I just finally accepted that there was no test I could pass for this. There was no teacher that had an answer key that would, that would help me. This was on me. And so I began to reach out to hundreds of organizations and hundreds of organizations told me no. But I learned from each no and it kept improving until I got what I wanted. And I believe that the only gatekeeper to one's success. It's not, it's not their friends, it's not a parent, a teacher, a mentor. It's their own willingness to put themselves out there and adapt, to learn from those mistakes. And as students, even though we have tests and everything like that, it's important to realize that you should put yourself in situations where there are no right answer, where there is no answer key, where you have to find the solutions. And lastly, I believe that there are so many things in our life that we want that are inevitable if we just keep moving forward and put ourselves out there. And I'm often asked, what made me think I could do what I'm doing now, go to these places and have something to say at my age? And I always share a conversation that I had with my mother a few years ago, who when diagnosed with breast cancer, she, she talked to me and she told me all of these different stories about things she wanted out of life but hadn't gone for yet. And I remember staring at this creative and passionate person who was hurting mostly from a choice of inaction, a choice of inaction. And she inspired me that I didn't have to wait in order to realize that I should relentlessly go after what I wanted out of life. And neither do you. Now is the time. Do not doubt your own ability to create or leave your own imprint on this world. Now is the time. Thank you so much.